The fight in this one was choreographed uh, by Jeff Yamada, who is someone that I worked with for the last movie. So he came over to choreograph some of the Cali stuff that's in the fight, you know, which goes by very fast because the way Paul wanted to shoot it, he, he wanted it to have that kind of rough, feel like almost like domestic violence type of scene between these two guys who are capable of killing each other very quickly. Don't mess about in a scrap. It's a warrior what? culture where being a tough and uncompromising fighter is considered a virtue. Wow. In a country that spent a large part of its history under the heel of colonial invaders, the Filipinos came up with the perfect camouflage for martial training. Hidden in the outskirts of Cebu City is the training ground of the most obscure fighting system in the Philippines, Black Eagle Escrima. With only eight practicing members left on the islands, the black eagles are a bit of an endangered species. But these men embodied the true spirit of Filipino martial arts. They call this hardcore training play, but it's preparation for the reality of street fighting. If you want to learn sparring back home, they'll issue you with a mouth guard, pads, head guard. They'll be very cautious. You learn sparring out here, do it with blades and flip-flops. If you take a look at the ground, there's broken bottles everywhere, because that's what it's like in the real streets. This is a free sparring, this is a chop me however you want. Yeah, they're taking it a little bit slow, but do fingers get chopped off sometimes? Yes, they do. You know, do people get stabbed? Yes, they do sometimes. 
but he's got a lot better chance than most people of taking a blade off somebody, hasn't he? Because he's faced it a thousand times. Yeah, and over he'd go into the broken glass. These two fellas jumping about like 18-year-olds are both in their 60s, and they learnt everything they know from this guy, Epping Attilo. He's 88. And he's agreed to demonstrate what Black Eagle a Screamer has to offer the discerning street fighter. Oh, the thing to remember here is that these sticks are not really sticks. They represent machetes, locally known as bolos. So, first lesson. If you want to keep your fingers, you don't go grabbing them. If that is a bolo, no? Yeah. Uh -huh. You're home already. Of course, you oh. cut my knuckle off. Uh, Do you practice every day? Because I cannot play basketball anymore. <laughs> What's your favourite technique in 75 years of training? You, you attack first, do not wait. Just hit them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's put me to shame. All the Black Eagles follow the same principles as their Grand Master. Just hit them. Usually people hold their fists like this, but they get this finger, stick it up like that, close them together, nice and tight. This becomes a weapon. OK, if I punch you, you'll just dig your finger into my fist. Can you believe that? What is that about? Whee! That hurts, doesn't it? He's hitting my pressure points with that. <laughs> this is dirty fighting, dirty fighting. Yeah. How do you practice to make this strong? Push-up like that. Push-ups on the broken glass. Like that. Jesus, that hurts. Oh. Look at that. That's just from two press-ups. The Black Eagles are simple and direct fighters. Even their only training tool is, well, uncomplicated. The objective, power, accuracy, speed, and a blowout. There's nothing around here to practice defending, unless you count the fighting box. Just attack their attacking arm. Cut the fingers, cut the hand, cut the wrist as it's coming in. Don't block and then think about attacking because you give the advantage to the other guy. They're just going at it now. Now they've got rubber around the pole so it doesn't hurt so much, but still, believe me, that's going to break your nose. At that sort of speed, it's going to cut your face as well. They're going to get a little bit hurt. But they're not going to kill each other and they get actual practical experience. It's about getting the weapon off the other guy and sticking him with yours or sticking him with his own. It's about what works, not about what looks good. And that's what's important. After 75 years of training, Grandmaster Epping knows exactly what works, as an unfortunate pickpocket recently discovered. This is what I did to the pickpocket. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That hurts. Puts his hand behind the throat, puts his body weight straight down, and all the pressure goes into my throat. Some more? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oof. Do you know this? No. Oh. Yeah, okay, so he's bearing the pressure against the knee and the hip joint there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, and if he puts any more on, I'm going to oh. fall into the... <laughs> Sorry, yeah? No, no, that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. When he laughs, he means lesson learned. And the lesson learned there is that you don't have to be a big, strong guy to put people on their arse. You can do it when you're 88. Fight! Bikiti Tercia is the ancient fighting art that's found a home in the Philippine Police Commando Squad. In an age where satellites and stealth bombers get all the birds, the knife is still the weapon of choice when these fellas slip behind enemy lines. One-on-one's one thing, but what do you do when you're faced with multiple opponents? This is one of their three-man training exercises. Real-life Filipino street fights are a dirty business, and if you carry a knife, you better be prepared to use it. In Bikiti Tercia, you're even encouraged to use your blade against a man with a gun. So what's quicker on the draw, the gun or the knife? Let's put it to the test. OK. 
Okay, so first thing, I wasn't even expecting that. And that's the way these guys attack when you're not expecting it. So basically, in those split seconds that he's making the move on me, first of all, I've got to register he's making a move, number one. Secondly, I've got to draw the weapon. I've got to unclip it and draw it. I've got to get the safety off. I've got to cock it if it's not cocked. I've got to aim it and I've got to fire. It, that's going to take me more than a split second. And in, in that split second, he takes the initiative and, it, and he gets the jump on you. Your average hostage situation is resolved with stun grenades and snipers. But these guys negotiate the Bikiti Tercia way. What do you do in a hostage situation if you haven't got a gun? Well, these boys use the knife. The approach is sentry number one, cuts a jugular vein. That should finish him off pretty quickly.